it basically filled up all the space. He's the juicy filling. He's, he's, he's the creamy center. <laughs> the, the, the little creamy center. Little man-flavored donut right there. Mm. And welcome to GT Not Live, where today, ah, ah, that was my very lame Godzilla scream. It's very iconic. It's an amazing scream, but uh, I cannot recreate. Ash, can you do your Godzilla scream? Um, I can try to imitate what you just did. I, uh, no, okay, go for it. Ah! That's now we're just singing like Guns and Roses. Ah! Led Zeppelin. That's Led Zeppelin. I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I, I said it and then I sang it and I'm like, that's not Guns N' Roses. That's Led Zeppelin. Yep. So anyway, um, regardless of our bad impersonations of Godzilla aside, we are back to continue uh, reacting and live theorizing about uh, the man in the suit, which is this uh, analog horror series that's really compelling really exciting, and also uh, doing incredibly well across the platform. It's by the channel Unknowingly, uh, who thank you for watching our stuff, by the way. Uh, we saw your comment on the last video, which was awesome. That It's always nice. It's always nice to have the creator comment. It's even better when the comment is like, good for you, and not, hey, I hate your guts. Stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> so so <laughs> double thumbs on that one. Thanks, Unknowingly. Um, but yeah, uh, this is fantastic. It's also, I, the, the timing of this worked out really well. I, I don't think we intended for the timing to work out super well in terms of like, hey, there's a new Godzilla movie in theaters, but just by the synergies of the universe, our video came out and this we became aware of the series roughly at the same time as the new Godzilla movie hit theaters, which I hear is fantastic. I've heard amazing things. I've heard that it's great, which I'm so excited about because I've, I mentioned this last time, but I've seen a couple of Godzilla things. I've watched the modern movies. They're okay. Like, I like them. I think the battles are fun. I think visually they're cool. But the storylines, I think a lot of times, let the, the human elements kind of let them down. The monster battles are cool. But I hear that this new movie, uh, Godzilla Minus One, across the board, like, reviews are glowing for it. Everyone's like, the humans are awesome. Like, the story actually gets you invested in, in both halves of the story. So I'm really hyped about that one. Uh, if you have seen Godzilla Minus One, uh, leave your thoughts down below, because even Steph, who, like, I'm I'm usually the guy who watches all the movie reviews, I'm the guy who kind of, like, consumes and filters down the media for Steph and I to consume, so I try to stay aware of all of it and then filter down, but even Steph's like, I heard about this new Godzilla movie, it sounds great! I'm like, I know, me too! So, uh, we're gonna go see that as soon as we possibly can. Uh, maybe maybe we could do a fun night out. Ash, you wanna join? Godzilla night? Oh my gosh, night? yes, I'd love that! That would be awesome. Woo! Nice, it'll be, it'll be a double date night, that'll be fun. Woo! -woo. Woo! Godzilla night! Ah! Nope, that's still Immigrant Song. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, when last we left off, basically Godzilla, uh, Man in the Suit, is quite literally about the guy who is the performer inside the Godzilla, like, rubberized costume in the old Toho movies. And what, what we've come to realize, right, is that he's morphing or transforming or fusing with the suit, right? And he's becoming one and the same with the suit. And uh, similar sorts of things are happening with the other monsters. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of like aggression and animosity to, towards the American-based characters, right? Uh, because this is happening in the aftermath of World War II. This is happening in the aftermath of the atomic bomb dropping. Uh, because our protagonist, who is in the suit, lost his family uh, to the, the bombings, there's a lot of nuance there to the relationship with when uh, King Kong comes in and uh, there's an American in the suit, and so there's a lot of friction there. Not only is this like a monster story of, of a man in a suit becoming this like mutant creation, uh, you know, man and beast, but there's a lot of historical context here. There's a lot of emotional resonance here, resonance here as well, uh, which is what has really made this stand out for me uh, as a series. So today we continue uh, with Depiction of Growth, 1962 uh, from the Godzilla Analog Horror. So, as we've been doing with these, let's let's kick it off with this guy. I I hope it's okay, Matt. Yes, please. I feel like we need to talk about the fit. 
Uh, my fit? Yes. Oh, I mean, you, yes, we can talk about my fit. So, which, which one? The 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 Disney, uh, the like retro Disney hoodie, or <laughs> or the Northern Lights uh, jacket that I'm wearing? Because um, it's cold. Well, it is cold, but I feel like we should talk about Northern Lights first. Um, but I also wanted to reflect on the combo of this jacket with the it, it, is a, it is a weird combo. <laughs> I will a agree. Look. This, is, this is not the way that I would recommend necessarily <laughs> styling this coat, <laughs> but this is just what I picked up and wore today because I was cold. Uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, this weekend uh, we are launching uh, a new line of merch. Uh, it's not a merch line. It's an apparel line. We're, we're trying to change the way we talk about it because it's not like, here's the Game Theory logo and it's all black and green. Like, we're actually releasing clothing. Like, actually, like, high quality, very nice clothing. You saw some of it a couple weeks ago when Amy was in town. That, like, big oversized sweater dress um, that is kind of unisex because I've been wearing it around a bunch too. I wore that kind of, like, pastel snow jacket. Uh, this is another one uh, that is a little bit in a different color palette, uh, you know, kind of more muted with brown, but is is literally the softest coat you will ever wear. It is incredible. Like, this thing is so warm and snuggly. It's wonderful. Um, but we have this new line of apparel that is available probably starting today, if not then starting tomorrow, of uh, uh, winter wear that's inspired by the Northern Lights and, you know, the, the bright colors of the Aurora Borealis. We've got this, like, really cool... A blazer jacket actually is that up here no all of it's downstairs we, we took it all downstairs here fill for time or okay. cut for time okay cut or fill I'll, i, I want to show it to you because I, I think it's really cool i'll be back go matthew oh <laughs> you're dropping things hold on all right there it is northern lights what do we got we got this cool suitcase it's an awesome cool suitcase it is beautiful you will never get it confused with any other suitcase at at an airport ever uh, and it's got all the cool features that I like out of my suitcases, like these straps, which allow you to hook it to other suitcases. Literal game changer. <laughs> Tons of pockets in there. We've got this guy, which is a pastel snow jacket. And it is literally a like winter coat, right? It's got that waterproof texture outside, but it's got this like really beautiful pattern and coloring. It's also got mud on it. It's got mud on it because yesterday, Ash and I were fil filming and, uh, taking, filming and uh, taking some social promo shots. And so I was laying around in the mud uh, doing snow angles, <laughs> not to be confused with snow angels. I did a couple of those too, but snow angles felt more appropriate for us. <laughs> we also have uh, matching snow pants that go with it. So you can have the whole set go skiing on the slopes with this guy. Like I just, we wanted stuff that was colorful and nice and festive. Uh, Cause again, like winter wear and our stuff in general tended to always be dark. We want something that was like a little bit more bright and colorful, like this suit jacket. This is the blazer I was talking about, the Aurora jacket. It's a good blazer. It's, it's a great blazer, it's right? It's a good blazer. I, like when I hosted the streamies earlier this year, I loved my outfit for it. But one of the things that we were working on in the background was I wanted a colorful suit. Being at a, a, an award show for creators and like creative people, I'm like, just a normal blue suit is fine, but it's kind of boring. Like it, I liked it. I was proud of how I looked but I wanted something that had a little bit more vibrance to it. And so this came out of that. And I'm working on another one that's a little bit more like targeted, a little bit more like paint, like you splatter, splatter paint on it. But I love the coloring of this because where else are you getting a nice blazer with like pinks and purples and, and blues together? It's just, it's wonderful, right? And it feels nice. And then this one is probably everyone's favorite in the collection, which is the giant oversized sweater. And it is literally a sweater, right? And, and the, the great thing about this is we're building pieces that can be staples of your wardrobe and that'll last for a long time. And, you know, it isn't just merch, right? Merch where they've, let's spray it on the front of a t-shirt or let's spray your logo on the, you know, on a hoodie or screen printed or whatever. Like this is literal, like this is sewn. This is actually like, this is a full on recycled Sherpa sweater and it's great, right? It's amazing. Um, it's big, it's heavy, it's gonna keep you warm and it's gonna last. It's gonna last a long, 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 long time. What I'll say about that one is if you want it when this collection drops, don't wait on it. <laughs> I could see that going this, real yeah, quick. Yeah, that, that, one, that one's gonna fly. Yeah. Because uh, that one is incredible. I Like all these pieces are incredible, but this is so unique. And, and, that, and again, like with the launch of Style Theory, we wanted to one-up our game. Like our merch was always, 
I would say better than a lot of other people's just because I care a lot about the quality of it. It's an extension of our brand and I, I, I take our brand very seriously. And so I always wanted you guys to have, and, and I, we're asking you to pay for it, right? I want you to be proud of the things that you're getting, excited about them. But as we kind of looked at like, well, what do we, what do we want to make, especially now that style theory exists? I'm like, I want to make the clothing that I don't see out there that feels special and feels unique and is the sort of stuff that you're not going to find in your local stores, but you can be proud of because you know where it came from, the thought process that went into it, and you know it's going to last and, and be high quality. And so that's where Northern Lights comes in. That's where the FNAF stuff comes in. And we're looking to do more of that moving forward, right? It's not just, you know, theory wear. It's, it's, and it's not just like, oh, I like this YouTube channel. It's stuff that you can wear and be proud of where you got it from, but it's also not like fandom in your face, which I think is important because this is the sort of stuff that I would wear. But anyway, there you go. That's, that's my promo. Oh, and then you got this guy too. So yep. anyway, without any further ado, now that we're, we've talked about the man in the fit, let's talk about the man in the suit. Ooh. The, the, or the, this is the man in the snow suit. The, the man in the snow snowsuit because it's 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 a snowsuit snow pants. I yeah I, I kind of like the fit one better, but I understand I, what you're doing. I thought I thought I would give two. I thought yeah. I would give two. They don't all come with like a poop stain on the back. That's that's for me. <laughs> that's that poop stain is my poop stain. It's from the mud yesterday doing our snow angles. So let's let's move away from the man in the fit and move on to the man in the suit. Let's do this. Uh, so depiction of growth, 1962. Uh, we've translated the Japanese text here, which is, I am not a monster. I will help you all. I will kill those who have wronged me, those who murdered my family, and those who supported them. You killed my family, monsters. So again, presumably this is relating to the Americans and the people who uh, dropped the bombs on Japan, which is where we know our protagonist lost his family. So let's see where we go from here. So, depiction of growth. And sorry, this is coming off of... So this is same year as the previous one. So the, pre the, the one before this was the Americans came over, they filmed a collaboration with King Kong, and uh, Godzilla basically kind of uh, attacked slash tried to kill off King Kong into the water because it's like, no, this is an American. They're the ones that dropped the bomb on us. Why are we cooperating with them? We need to, to end this. Uh, and so we're kind of following up on that story later that year. I was startled by the first encounter of the man in the suit. It made me more curious than ever but I needed answers. It made me more curious than ever. It might harm me of, it might harm me of doing this, but I need answers. Okay. So, okay, so he was, at the, the, the last video ended with him coming face to face with the man in the suit. So that's why it might harm him, but he's, that prompted him to get interested in, in pursuing this story. So I've gone to one of my friends who is smart, you know, one of my friends who is smart with this stuff. I won't name her, so I'll call her Elisa. Yeah, you know, everyone has that friend who's really smart about people's bodies melting into goo and fusing together with their rubber rubberized suit for Japanese giant kaiju movies. It's a weird hyperfixation. It is, but we all have, we all have that one. Yeah. That all we all have that person who is smart with that stuff. Right, totally. You know, mine's named uh, John. Yours is named John. Yeah, my my friend with that John. I go to John for that sort of stuff. Oh, I go to Frankie. Frankie? Oh, I know Frankie. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. It's all right. <laughs> I called Lisa, but uh, she was in the middle of teaching her class, you know, about this sort of stuff. But she would still call me because of how curious she was. She'd never seen anything like this. She'd never seen anything like this. I recorded the section of the call. The thing is, whatever this was caused wasn't from a pill. This is something else. Oh, God. This is the work of radiation. Oh, so this is, okay, nice, we, we called it. So one of the things I, I predicted or at least speculated about last time was the idea of, hey, since this is happening in the aftermath of World War II and the atomic bombs, is there a world where the suit has gotten radioactive in some way or there's some of that fallout that has permeated this land which is causing him to kind of meld and grow into the suit? So it seems like Elisa and I on the, on the same page, Elisa. Holy, holy shit. The man in the suit doesn't fuse with the suit instantly. His body explodes in the suit, then it reshapes itself in the suit. How do I... That's basically the mimic. I, everything always comes back to FNAF, but it, but it is literally the lore of the mimic. 
the Mimic is able to transform it, at least in the books. Mimic 2 is able to transform itself, slide into the suits, and then like mutate his body so he fills the suits. So really, now all we need is just some remnants! Maybe there's some remnant radiation around there, huh, Ash? Oh, no. Maybe. Oh, I mean, here's the thing. There very well may be. There might be. I mean, if this is happening, then there's definitely some remnant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for saying it. Yep, I appreciate for it. Sure. explain this. Imagine a cream-filled donut. Without the cream, it's mostly a flat donut. <laughs> that was the suit before, but because of the filling. The man, it basically filled up all the space. He's the juicy filling. He's, he's, he's the creamy center. <laughs> the, the, the little creamy center. Little man-flavored donut right there. Mm. But him and a cream-filled donut are different. The cream and donut are separate entities. Mm. There is a barrier so they don't mix. Ooh. The man in the suit, however, his skin, his flesh, his bones, it's fusing with the suit. His teeth would be the suits. So basically what we're saying is that the donut's becoming a bit soggy. It's a soggy donut. Right. The, the cream filling is slowly leaching out and tainting the rest of that delicious donut. And so now you just got yourself a soggy cream filled donut. Not okay. <laughs> Not okay with that. Also with teeth. It's cream, soggy cream filled donut with teeth. Whatever he took, it's mutating him. It's making him more like a creature than a human. Soon he will have animalistic properties, like using its teeth more effectively and would be able to control his tail. You okay. said his eyes could move and that they are bloodshot. Yeah. But in this photo, his eyes flashed back. Human I mean, but in this photo, they're not bloodshot because it's black and white. <laughs> Hard to tell. That's really funny. Well, one of the things I'm curious about is the, the dialogue or the talking that's happening in the background. And I don't know if that's specifically for setting context of her talking from like her classroom or a, a busy school or, or place where she's teaching and you're just hearing background like maybe hallway noise or classroom noise, or if that's trying to indicate something about like, you know, why people talking in the background of our call. I'm, I'm curious. It's, it's a little bit weird that there's the creative choice made here of background dialogue. Might just be for setting a context, uh, but I did want to call it out because it's, it's an interesting choice. When eyes don't do that, he flashed back. Human eyes don't do that. I disagree. You Have you ever taken a photo with flash? Like, I, yes. Right. And human eyes flash back. Pew! They get the they get that crazy like red eye. Yeah, that that red flash. Mm -hmm. I guess like when I when I think about a flash, I think about that bright white light. Like cat eyes. Yeah. Like cat eyes at night. Like whoa, and you're like whoa, this demon is watching me. Yes. This exactly. cat is gonna kill me in the middle of the night. And then he and then it, he just ends up cuddling on your face. Yeah. Did, am I the only one with that experience? No, you're not. My cat just like bites me a little bit more though. <laughs> Understandable. You know. <laughs> Try and put him down. If not, it is probably too late for mankind. Wow, that's a that's a broad statement. If you can't take him out, it's too late for mankind. She had something about him mutating to the point that he looks like a beast. I mean, he he does look a lot like the suit. I questioned what he would look like when he was fully fully mutated. She corrected me. There is no stopping point. There is no stopping point for the mutation. She then told me to go to an artist and gave me a description that I sadly forgot now. God, you had one job, man! I told them to make the art, and they complied. My Japanese would be a little bit rusty because I thought I asked for one drawing, but got three. Here are the drawings. Sorry, real quick, what, what is the tapping? I don't know. Right? The tapping is weird. Again, there's a lot of interesting background noise in this one that is different from all the ones that we've gotten up to this point. So it's weird that we're hearing it. Now all of a sudden, we've been doing all these episodes about cool math games and FNAF. I've got like my mind fixated on tap codes everywhere. So. I mean, you could, it, it, it could be like a sloppily done tap code. Cause there, that did seem like a sequence of five and then two and then gap. I don't know. It, again, it could be just me overthinking things, but it's just an odd creative choice to have a bunch of tapping in the background. It's 
So that was a lot that's happened. He's gonna look like Godzilla! What? No! No! Ooh, then Godzilla's face is gonna melt off. Then, oh. Still kinda looks like Godzilla. <laughs> sorry, sorry! Thanks, closed caption! What's up? Godzilla with slightly more fingers! Okay, hold up. So, shoot, what is this? Do we have uh, something on here? Like an aud audition, audacity? Um, I mean, audacity would probably be the fastest to download. Right. And we'd have to rely less on Creative Cloud, which I love to do. Right, it's, I love that. If we can rely less on Creative Cloud, that'd be amazing. Uh, this file came out. Great. It's fine. Download an unverified file. We're great. We're all good here. Sure. I trust Audacity. We'll be right back after we install everything that we need to, to hear this. So here's here's Audacity. This is the the end. Where it became like super, super spooky. We're seeing all the different monsters. We're seeing the different the different drawings where he loses some of his skin and then immediately gets his skin back. And then here should be the start of the quiet dialogue. Yeah, okay. So, oh, I haven't had to use uh, Audacity in a long time. Let's see here. Let's crank up the gain. See what we got. That might be, maybe that'll help. Shoot, you can tell, you can tell, you can tell there's something there. It sounds English. Can we denoise it potentially? What? It's, it's this got, it's got this like metallic filter. We're gonna have to like undo the metallic filter in some way. Let's do noise reduction first. Yeah. Closer. Yeah. Crank it up. Shoot. Oh, I feel like we're so close. I know. I feel like I can make out the words like save you or right? something. Oh, we're so close. What else would this be? It would be... How do you... The thing... The, one of the tricky things that in my experience, and, and you're more of an audio expert than I am, but I know when I was audio editing or doing effects on audio, it's easy to layer on effects it is very difficult to undo those effects once they've been put on. Exactly. Yep. Like that's the trick about audio decoding is I can make you sound like a robot. I can make you sound like a demon. I can make you sound like you're talking in a, in a bathroom down the hall across the stairs. But undoing those steps is actually shockingly difficult, at least manually based on my experience. And in general, I feel like it's, it's, it's a significantly harder process and people have a hard time wrapping their head around it. I feel like there's got to be like AI tools that can do this sort of thing, though. I probably. Right? I've been seeing more talk about things like that come up. Yeah. Um, you have some really talented engineers who are able to get the audio to a place where it is more similar to the original track. Yeah. You can always tell that like stuff happened to it and it's not the same. Yes. But, you know. It's just one of those things where it's like, there is no true healing or fixing of bad audio. Yeah, yeah, bad audio is just bad audio or corrupted audio, transformed audio is just hard to do stuff with. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute to think through this and see if there's anything that we can do, because you don't wanna necessarily like go through all this, uh, but we can come back with some of the experiments that we've done. All right, so more in a minute. Um, Ash, how's your search coming along? So I grabbed the um, the video link and I put it into YouTube Comment Finder. Yes. Um, and a couple of look, folks- Look at us doing all sorts of like leet hacks here. Oh yeah, Doing man. Audacity, doing AI audio enhancement. And what what is yours, Comment Finder? Oh, ytcomment.kmcat.uk. 
favorite website on the planet, baby. <laughs> Wait, really? Come yeah, on. man. I've never, what does, what does Comment Finder do? So you put in any link to any video you want, okay. and then you could type in keywords. Um, oh, so it's kind of like what we have on the back end of our channels for our own comments, except here it's for public-facing any, videos? Anything, yeah. But anyway, so what did you, what have you found? So um, unknowingly confirmed that the dialogue is, that we hear at the end, is in the description of the video. So. Wait. Uh. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, that's not okay. So you're telling me that the, the thing that we've been trying to do here is just, it's, it's the description this whole time? Yes. Of course. Of course. I, dude, what, what is Lord happening here? I don't get it. It's not letting me do it. Oh, it's going to take all my personal data, Ash. There, that's probably why. There it is. Now, now that it can take my personal data, it's like, okay. So what, what did you want me to look for? Um, I literally put the word end. <laughs> Great. The speaking at the end is the same as the description. And then it... <laughs> no! 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 Okay. But is that true? Uh, the, uh, scroll the... down more. Is that confirmed? Go down more. The Jurassic Wonders comment, 2307. Hit the reply button. Okay. And there it is. Unknowingly. The dialogue is now in the... Ah! <laughs> After all that. After all that. We know what it is. It says this. I'm not a monster. I will help you all. I will kill those who've wronged me, you who murdered my family, and those that supported them. You killed my family monsters. Okay. Well, there you have it. That, on that feel-good note, let's move on to the next video, shall we? I'm glad that it took us a good, like, 90 minutes to do that. Yeah. Nailed it. We're so efficient on this channel. Right? You, be glad that we cut all of that for you, for you to see. <laughs> Uh, all right, depiction of horror uh, or depiction of growth. Let's move on to this guy. Okay, so we're we're actually now flashing back in time. We've been 54, 62, 62, but now we're flashing back in time to 58. Oh, huh. What I'm suddenly realizing is that the videos playlist is in a different order than what we've been watching. So the playlist of the series, yeah, the, the created playlist is actually in a different order. Oh, so the... Oh. Huh? Oh, interesting. So this is presumably the correct way to watch it, which is from Godzilla to Angiris. Godzilla strikes out, growth, depiction of growth, but now we're flashing back in time. Huh, interesting. I wonder why that is. Let's find out together, shall we? Let's also find out what the name of this upload is. Here we go. Suit trial, Phoenix Wright. Objection! <laughs> Suit trial. I would like... Ah! I would like to cross-examine the suit. <laughs> That's, I know, I, I'm assuming it means like, oh, we're testing out the suit in the early days. Like, oh, we're going to figure this out. But when I see suit trial, that's immediately what I think of. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Wright putting a Godzilla rubberized suit on trial. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so here's the Japanese text. But it says, I've translated some of it. Sorry if it's inaccurate. We are fully aware of the situation we're in. Whoa, so this is very long. This is very short. I am i don't believe that they're the same thing. Why should I listen to him is what it says. Why should I listen to him? And now underneath it says, I've translated some of it. Sorry if it's inaccurate. We're fully aware of the situation we're in. We'll do our best to test what threw me to hear so they can train him. We'll try and do some audio tests. Let's start with the man in the suit. We have him in a cell. Make sure he is there until you can train him. He destroyed the light and only the darkness. But that's okay. We have a light. What? He destroyed the light and only the darkness. Like, only the darkness remains. Right? That's right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. He destroyed the light. Only the darkness remains. But that's okay. We have a light. So we will bring him out. Right? Like, maybe, again, if this is truly a battle of man versus monster, monster is winning. He lost the light. He destroyed the light. But we have a light. We have a means of bringing him back out, right? right. We have a means of extracting him. Uh, the thing that I'm really curious about, though, is why is why should I listen to him? And this is different. So it's it, we have multiple speakers down here in the description. That's really interesting. And historically, the 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 kanji, the Japanese text, is coming from uh, Godzilla himself, the monster, right? So it's interesting that like. There is a, a conflict here between the two of them. I don't know what that glitch was. So this is suit trial. 
I snuck around the Toho building a day after the encounter with the man in the suit. I found a tape labeled, labeled this, which is going to be, save, uh, this is going to be a suit. Sure, why not? Compatibility test. Oh man, it is like, we were making comparisons to FNAF before, now it's like Poppy Playtime. <laughs> Like, does the personality match the, the personality of, of the toy? We're going to fuse them together. Compatibility test. So Mommy Longleg is like, Hi, Godzilla. I'm going to make sure that you're going to fit into the suit perfectly. Mommy Longlegs. Here we go. That's coming up soon. It is. That's, that is coming up sooner than I realized. I realized that this was some years after the Angiris incident. Let me just show it. Okay, show me that tape. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. There's a lot, a lot of translation on this one today. We've got a lot of code solving. It also just goes to show how effective um, doing things in different uh, different languages is. Um, and I, we'll just say Angiris. Uh, nope, definitely not. We're going to just say Godzilla code. I've already done Godzilla code. Darn it. I'm going to say Toho code. Um, but just goes to show how challenging it can be to do uh like puzzle solving when you're dealing with other other languages right even this is tricky because you have to there's so many steps in the process to solving this there we go toho suit trial this tape cannot be viewed do not share this tape well then mission failed <laughs> definitely not sharing it with everyone all right don't you love it when tapes leak out for our public consumption? It's great. Oh boy. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I'm so tired, Ash. I'm so t I have to even the stuff that looks like it's in English has to be translated. What is this? We are we will do our best to Mm. Test. Test what they need to hear so they can listen. We still, we still, hey, we will, hey, and to. I think it's, yeah, it's, we will try and do. Some audio tests. Yeah. Oh, oh, we are fully aware of the oh situation. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We are, I have translated some of this. Sorry if it's inaccurate. It's all coming together, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, props to unknowingly. Yeah. I feel like that is significantly more accessible. 100%. Yes, absolutely. I Thank you. We are fully aware of the situation we're in. We'll do our best to test what threw me to here so they can train him. We'll try and do some audio tests. Let's start with the man in the suit. Okay, so this is... <laughs> yep, you don't say. Is this like a like an AI like Japanese voice speaker? I feel like that's gotta be what it is. Interesting. And, and it, this is this is an interesting creative choice on on the part of unknowingly as the creator of the series because look they've translated it down here as he destroyed the light and only the darkness but that's okay we have a light but up here he destroyed the light and only the darkness but that's okay something about he, our camera our camera has night vision which is Ooh. fundamentally different from he destroyed the light and, and only the darkness, but that's okay, we have a light. That is actually very different. So it goes from being something that's actually symbolic, you know, and like, oh, he's losing himself to the darkness and we have a light to bring him back, to literally this is our cameras have night vision, which is a very literal thing, right? We just have the functionality. So that's fascinating. The, the level of misleading or... Um, or limited knowledge narrators here, 
a subjective narration here is really fascinating because what we're seeing across the board is that all these characters are dealing with different bits of information and, and dealing with them in incomplete and sometimes erroneous ways, which is just really fascinating. It's, it's a very different way of telling a story and it's a very different way of kind of like seeding clues out there, but it's still no less challenging, if not even more challenging, to kind of cross-reference the same document being told through different lenses and seeing which one is actually telling you the truth versus which one is not. So that's fascinating. Yeah, our camera has night vision. Huh. Fascinating. Cool. This is awesome. I, I love this series. This is so much fun. It's so different from anything else. Even though it's riffing on themes that are more than a little familiar to us at this point. Oh. Check out that tail. Okay. Kind of short and stubby. There it is. Okay, so we're doing audio testing. <laughs> this is like FNAF VHS. Doing the audio test. Does it move? Does it not? Check off the box if it does. It's actually just a bop. Oh, yeah, definitely getting some FNAF six times. Ah, uh, leave me alone. I don't like this. It's modern music. Yeah, and, and again. In the interest of, like, clue solving. All the Japanese text that's happening in the background, whole separate thing to decode here. Huh. Man, we're really big into the audio clues right now. Audio clues obscured in the background with effects on them, and also in Japanese. Can you, can you hear what they're saying? Not super well. Because that last time, as I'm listening to it, it sounded like come closer, but I feel like it wouldn't be in English. So I'm assuming... Here, hop into YouTube commenter dot dash 5501. <laughs> see if there's anyone that can translate this text. Because I feel like it's a whole nother batch of it. Doing myself. Oh! Oh! Godzilla. <laughs> I did like that remix that was about to happen. I was waiting for the beat to drop. It did not. I was a little bit sad about that. Hello. Oh, you big boy. Smile for the camera. That's more of an eagle. Cool. All right. Weird. It felt like it was leading to something and then it just kind of cut off. Huh. And I'm not seeing anything in here. Oh, maybe. Maybe there's something. 
Because it feels like there's this awkward cutoff at the end that makes me think like, oh, maybe there's something hidden in the blackness. But as I'm watching it, I'm, I'm having a hard time saying like, oh yeah, clearly there's something that we can brighten in here. Maybe that you can see that there's a little bit of deep reds that might be forming a shape. It's, it's worth a shot. Uh, Ash, have you had any success finding what the, the long dialogue there at the middle was? Um, according to the comments, and I feel a little silly, um, it's Oppenheimer. The Oppenheimer speech. Wait, really? And now I am become death? Or um, destroy or not, destroy of worlds? Here, take this off screen for a second because i got to sign into Photoshop because life is pain. All right. Thanks. Bring you back over. Just because it hates me so much every time. I'm sorry. You were logged in for just a day ago? Well, too bad. Log in again. So with all that being said, now we can do this. Here, you can pull me back up. Yep. Thank you. Let's see what we got. Is there a... No, I don't want hue and saturation. I want... I guess I could have done brightness or lightness. Let's do classic. Let's do exposure, actually. Exposure. I tend to have better, more consistent results with exposure. No, you just kind of see his eyes. If that, that's actually just video grain. So that's not really giving us anything. Let's just do brightness just to make sure. No, it's just artifacting of the video. Old video, dark background. Can we hop, um, yeah, let's go back to the video. Yep, here we are. Um, I'm there. If we can go to 345. 345, yes. Here we go. There. I am become death, is what it said. The oh, the destroyer of worlds. Of worlds. Yep. I hear it. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like now, now that you know what it's saying, you like can't unhear it. Oh, Felipe Bruno. Everyone's favorite game. Yes, devilish hairdresser. We knew the world would not be the same. Multi-armed form. One says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. There you go. That's that's it. All the audio effects put on it are really interesting, like how mechanical and robotic it is. Really, really interesting. So that whole thing. So you did you just hear that or did the comments call it out? So the comments were calling out Oppenheimer and I couldn't figure out like what, Why? like where. Yeah. And then I was like, you said that. And I was like, it has to be that part. And yeah. then we found it. Nice. Oh, here for those who can't understand what Goji, a.k.a. the man in the suit is saying, he is saying. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Ash, why do we try so hard? I We need to try less hard, Ash. Oh my god. We knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed, a few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, "No, I've become death, the destroyer of worlds." I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Obviously. Obviously. I quit this court. I We are trying. We, we have we to are, stop. We are working so hard, Ash. I, you know what? I feel like there's something to be learned here, right? Looking for the details, not looking at the big picture. The big picture being the second top comment on the video, which, you know, probably one of the more natural places to observe. <laughs> But we're like, we're going to do it ourselves. We're like, I'm heading over to ytcomment.kmcat.uk. <laughs> Duh. Duh, right? Well, why wouldn't you? Why right. wouldn't you? Right. Uh, oh when you could God. just scroll down and read one of the 210 comments. The fact it was on screen for so long as we looked at Unknowingly's pinned comment. You're joking. <laughs> this is awful. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> I get the sense that there's something fundamentally wrong with us. I think so. I think we have a problem. All right, I think we got time for one more here, especially if, you know, we read the comments rather than spending like a half hour trip down <laughs> rabbit holes to try and explain something that literally is three comments in. Oh, man. God. That's amazing. So, okay. So, I Am Become Death. If, if this is coming from Goji... 
right? So he has become death because he is Godzilla at this point, right? He is, he is the monster. He is the embodiment of death. Mail message, 1962. I was mailed this tape. Here, before we started, we gotta read the description, always. And those comments. Read those comments. All right, text. Why should I listen to him? Oh, uh, here we go. You took everything from me. You took everything from me. It says, you took everything from me. Thanks, comments. This is 1962, so I fast forward. I don't think someone in the Toho Studios made this. No, that's me when I'm hungry. That's my sound. That's, that's, that's me. Ooh, that's my stomach. Uh, so we're going to save this. We're going to say, hungry stomach sound. Google Translate. Images. Boop. Pictures. Hungry stomach. Okay. You don't understand. <laughs> look, look at him smiling at us. <laughs> Giving us the big old smile. What a ham. You don't understand. Oh, get up! Stop trying too hard, man! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Ash. <laughs> Apologies, headphone oh. users. And by headphone users, I mean Ash. <laughs> oh, we just said this. We just said not to try too hard. Oh, and they just translated it in my face. Oh, what is this world? It is pain. It is agony. You don't understand. <laughs> getting, I'm getting rage here, hair from working too hard. You killed my family. My name is Inigo Montoya. Prepare to die. You Americans cheered when we lost. We lost our homes. We lost our families. You nuked us. I'm wondering if the sound in the background is like a, a bomb alarm. I was thinking the same thing. Right? Like yeah. it, it's uh, that droning like that droning sound. I'm, uh, it sounds like it's some sort of converted or maybe it, it even is the actual like sound of like a, 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 like a, an alarm bell or a warning of like hey they're on the attack here they come. This is the sound that you hear before the bombs drop. It's just chilling. Just absolutely chilling. The nuke took my wife. Yeah, it's, yeah, you can hear the bell winding down or the alarm winding down. The nuke took my kids. Hiroshima was our home. I left for a business trip. You took everything from me. So I decided to return peace. by getting rid of the people who wronged us. He disappeared. Poof. He poofed away. He poofed. This is 62. Interesting. So this is actually quite a bit later. Whoa! 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 Oh. That I've been kind of I've I've been kind of joking on the monster this whole time because it's Godzilla, right? It's like, oh no, it's spooky. And the images that we've seen of he's got an extra hand, or like, oh, he's looking at us through the dark, or whatever. It's still Godzilla, right? And and it's still kind of the monster that you expect, so it's not particularly scary. Um, that that got me. That was scary. That was legitimate. I, I did not see that coming. And and just the silhouette of him having so many like teeth. That's freakish. That is that weird uncanny valley of like, oh, I don't like that. That is uncomfortable. He's like one part Godzilla and, and one part spiky teeth. Or alternatively, one part Godzilla, one part baleen. Like a whale. He's going to be sucking on some algae and kelp. This is great. I think this is, this is, to me is the scariest one of them all. All the other ones have kind of like the, the classic analog horror. Oh no, he's fused in the suit. Like there's... There's a, a concern there. There is like a, a spook factor. It, it falls into a lot of those tropes. This one is is chilling to me because it's it's the most human, right? And it's the most real and it's the most grounded because it's about the real world bombing. You're hearing the the siren go off in the background, and it's it's just this like this more than any of the other ones puts you in the mindset of oh, this is why 
this is happening and this is a real event where these awful this awful tragedy occurred probably not the same alarm bell or not the same siren but it's like something similar and it gets you in that mindset and to to think about everything that was lost so needlessly in that moment is is just unbelievable unbelievably sad and then to top it off with with an image that is legitimately to me the most unsettling of all of them because it's believable it's unexpected it is disturbing like it takes the Godzilla form that you know and just like transforms it in a very creepy way like the 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 little tassels hanging out of his mouth is is very concerning he's got a very hairy mouth which I don't approve and it, and it's not about solving the kanji codes it's not about having to translate it it's just like you're seeing the images of everything that was lost so sad so so moving like I got chill this one gave me chills it is interesting from a timeline perspective though because this is again 62 so it's coming the the timeline of the series is interesting because he fuses and he begins fusing with the suit in 54. this is a solid you know six seven eight years later uh after that first fusion that happens they're doing tests on him they're trading him he's attacking the americans so there's a lot of things going on here with overlapping timelines i'm just surprised it took him this long to strike back you know to have this sort of reaction I think maybe it was the, again, it, it seems like the collaboration with the Americans in the, the King Kong movie is the thing that really tipped it over. And it's like, no, you're disrespecting us and I'm having to go through all the pain of loss all over again and all the, the embarrassment and frustration and, and sadness that came with all of this. So, yeah, there you go. Really invested in this now. I love you. I'm, I'm just reading the comments. I've learned that I should probably read the comments because, you know, the comments know a lot of this stuff i'm bringing this series i'm binging the series currently and really like what you're doing suitman's goal is to destroy the americans out of revenge is similar to the japanese concept of on on rio a vengeful spirit vengeful spirit oh my god everything ash everything is fnaf unacceptable this uh, you know, guess what this is going to show up in the next game theory is the vengeful spirit actually from japan oh my god <laughs> So that is the next couple in uh, Godzilla, Man in the Suit. Are we, I, I feel like this is probably a good time to wrap it, right, Ash? I'm thinking so. You think so? Yeah. We've spent, we spent a lot of time, whether or not it, it makes the cut, we've spent a lot of time trying to frivolously, I guess, uh, decode all these messages. And now we know. So we move forward smarter, wiser, stronger. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just like Angiris fused into his suit. Um, next time, we've got... If we're, ooh, that last one's 11 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to be like, we're going to do it next time. But we're probably not going to do it next time. But you know what? Hey, this was awesome. Uh, and again, unknowingly, congratulations on crossing 50,000 subscribers. Uh, please, uh, if you're enjoying this series, go support them as a creator. Go support their channel. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, I don't know if the suit's done. We'll see when we get to episode 10. Like, is this complete or is this just like the start of where it's going? I don't know. I am so hooked on it. I, I love it. This is, without question, my favorite piece of Godzilla media, which, like I've said before, I don't have a whole lot of experience, but I've seen an okay number of things. I think this is fantastic. Uh, I haven't seen Godzilla Minus One yet, though, so challenge, challenge accepted. But, I mean, it's... You can have all the budgets in the world. You can have all the best CGI. You can have all the special effects. But at the end of the day, so much can be done with simple tools and just a really compelling narrative. And I think unknowingly has really showcased that here, where if you're able to connect it with real human emotion and real relationships, all that other stuff is, is needless. It's dressing. Like this, this is what gets to the core of a narrative, and this is what makes something compelling. So congratulations, unknowingly. I cannot wait to see where you go from here. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. Ah! Just calling out to the birds. It's like I'm a crane. Ah! Still immigrants, though. <laughs> See ya.